Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since my last video and we are now in June and we've been getting lots of warm temperatures so there are lots of flowers here on the flower farm at the moment and we are just kind of ending with the biennials and the hardy annuals are starting to come through now so we are very busy. Uh, I have had a uh, a market I've done since my last video um, which was really really good I really enjoyed doing that market it's the first one that I've done since 2019 so um, I'm really looking forward to hopefully being able to do more of those in the future um, I've been picking flowers for my subscriptions and um, working on the new field that we are going to be expanding into next season um, doing all of the fencing and things like that in that field and it has also been very dry and warm here. We haven't really had any rain for a couple of months now. And um, we actually got our first good downpour yesterday and it has been raining on and off today and I'm expecting a little bit more. So I'm just here in my back flower field where I, um, I'm just having a little bit of a tidy up because I've got a workshop this weekend where people are going to be able to come and pick their own flowers for a vase arrangement. So I'm looking forward to having people coming to the field this weekend and I also have some subscription flowers going out this week. So this morning I have done all of my stem counting to make sure that I have enough flowers for all of the things that I've got going on this week and I've got more than enough which is great. So um I have been just cutting the grass, cutting some of the weeds down before they go to seed because that would be a nightmare and um, kind of just tidying things up and getting rid of weeds and things. I had a really, really good tidy up in the front field yesterday because that was starting to slip a little bit. Um, I went over it all with the hoe and pulled out some of the larger weeds and it's looking quite nice and tidy now and this morning I went and cut the grass and just moved all of the stuff that I'd um, earmarked for the, the muck heap. So um, yeah, getting on well here. Uh, I thought I would give you a little bit of an update on what's going on in the field. So if you have watched my previous videos from this season, then you'll know that um, getting seeds off to a good start this year has been a struggle. So there are actually empty patches in this field, which is kind of my worst nightmare as a grower, but we're having to just get on with it and adapt and see what we can do about it to mitigate the, that um, problem that we're having. So what I am doing with the empty spaces is I'm just sowing lots of biennials ready for next season and they will go in the empty beds. So here we have some Limonium sewer warii and then some Scabious up here. And then this is all Cosmos. This hasn't actually been pinched. So you can see there that one's starting to flower. I need to go ahead and um, pinch some of it. I think I might do half uh, just because I would like to, some of it to come along sooner rather than later. And then up here, we've got some Amaranthus and there are some Zinnia, uh, sorry, not Zinnias, uh, Snapdragons uh, planted a little bit further down. So then the bottom third of that field is empty, or maybe it's even not a third, but maybe a quarter. And then here we've got some Statis, um, which is coming along nicely. There's some new growth on those, some new flower buds. So I'll be picking those in a couple of weeks time, I think. Uh, and then we've got some ping pong scabious up there. And last week I cleared out all of the ronculus from this low tunnel and replanted with zinnias. Um, I haven't actually put the cover over this yet because we have been having quite warm temperatures. So we, I haven't felt like we really needed that on. So um, hopefully those zinnias will do okay. I think I need to come in here and do a compost tea feed because I haven't done one in a couple of weeks. So we're about due and um, hopefully that will help us to have lots of really healthy plants in these beds and then i have over here some random stuff some flax corn cockle ami um some ranunculus that i didn't have the heart to pull out because they were still flowering and in the bed beyond that is lots of sweet williams that were mixed in with the foxglove so i'll be picking those ready for this week and then some greek cress that desperately needs picking as well and over here we have some helichrysum 
uh, which is starting to bud as well, which is nice. Um, they might might even be closed just because it's been raining. They might be able to be ready to pick soon. Um, so we've got a row of those up to about there. And then beyond that, I planted some flocks, but I noticed yesterday it has been getting eaten by something. I think it might be the rabbits or something like that, which is very frustrating because um, flocks in the summer are kind of the mainstay um, kind of um, pretty element within my bouquet so I would really be missing out on that if um, I wasn't able to pick any of that and then here we've got another succession of Amy spring sown Amy and then some corn cockle which is looking a bit heavy under the rainwater so because of the nature of the season um, things are a bit mishmashed in this field which I don't really like things kind of feel like they're in random places where I didn't really want them to be um, but we're just going with it like I said before um, there's no point dwelling on um, things that have gone wrong we've just got to try and move forward with it um, and here we've got um, our new my new no dig beds which are weed membrane free and I really I really enjoy this area because um, it just aesthetically it looks quite pleasing apart from the weeds that are growing in around the edge and we've got here poppies um, these are giant poppies and there are some calibri poppies around the back here how gorgeous is that that is um, Calibri poppies from Italian Ranunculus and I sowed those in January. And then I've got a bed of snapdragons here. Um, there has been a problem with rabbits digging in here, despite the fact that my field is supposed to be rabbit secure. I, don't, I haven't figured out yet where the rabbits are coming from. And then here I planted out a bed of Achillea and Solidago, but I think the rabbits just keep coming here and um, chomping at it. And these were like really nice straight rows before, but the rabbits are kicking them about and they seem to just dig and then they kind of just dislodge the plant like that. They don't actually seem to eat them or do anything um, to them. They just dig them and it's really annoying. So I have to keep coming back and replanting them. Uh, and here we've got some more status and some more helichrysum and another bed of snapdragons there. And just down here is a very thin, sparse looking strip of flax, which is a salmon colour, which I'm really looking forward to, to seeing how that looks. I've grown the white one and the blue one before, but I spotted the salmon one in a garden centre and I was like, I've got to have that because that would definitely go with my kind of colour palette. This bed here is kind of, um, not, not a mistake, but I really need to get on top of this before it becomes a mistake. It is a, um, cover cropped bed which has obviously been taken over by buttercups thistles and then this is the cereal rye that is part of the cover crop mix that has probably gone a little bit too far but i need to get that chopped down and covered up with a tarpaulin or some weed membrane before um it seeds all over the place and then we have a bed here of foxgloves which um a lot of it didn't get picked because I was actually on holiday last week and it was the perfect time to pick them kind of last week or the week before and um, I was away at the time but I needed the break so um, those foxgloves all need chopping down and I haven't decided whether I'm going to keep them in the ground yet or um, and try and see if they'll flower again next year or whether to pull them up and replace them with something else. These were nice but I do prefer the peach and apricot coloured ones. I think they kind of go with my style a little bit better. And then over here to the right, we have a cover crop. Um, we're mainly looking at mustard, phacelia, uh, radish, and that's about it, I think, that has germinated here. And um, it's actually been great, this cover crop, because of the phacelia. And I haven't grown Phacelia before, but I'm definitely going to be growing it again because it's a really nice purple colour that complements the kind of pastel colours of spring with the ranunculus and things. And the bees love it. As you can see, there's a bee just landed on there now. Um, and the reason why I never grew it before... Because when I first started flower farming, I went on a course with Georgie um, Newbury from Common Farm Flowers and she said that she never grows Phacelia because she doesn't like it and she finds it quite annoying. 
and I was just like oh well that just means that I shouldn't grow a facelia then because it's annoying and um, I shouldn't grow it it's not worth it but um, so yeah for the last seven years I've never grown facelia because of that and just chance has it that it came within this cover crop and I really enjoy using it as flower so I'll definitely be growing that one again and um, that's very quick whistle stop tour of what's been going on in this field I'll just quickly show you the polytunnel before we move on so if you watched my last video you will have seen that I was running an experiment here in the polytunnel where I was um, so basically I'd killed it off by covering it up with weed membrane I scattered a cover crop in here. The cover crop um, did great. It um, grew over the whole lot of the polytunnel. And then um, I brought the pigs in to try and graze it down because one of the five soil health principles um, kind of states that animal involvement is beneficial to soil health. So I thought, great, I've got pigs. I can bring them in here and they can do all the work for me. And I don't have to, um, put in too much physical labor myself so I brought the pigs in here and what I was doing was bringing them in here during the day taking them home at night then the weather started to get quite warm so I couldn't bring them in here during the day because it was too hot and um, then the mustard looked like it was about to go to seed and I was like I need to get on top of this before it goes to seed so what I decided to do was chop it all down uh, I think we actually chopped it with shears uh, by hand and then I came in afterwards and mowed it down with the lawn mower and it made quite a nice um, mulch bed on the top and I kind of just left it like that for a couple of weeks and I noticed that there were some weeds um, that were germinating and mainly fat hen which is the main weed that I get in here um, started to come up from under the mulch so I decided to cover it all over with this black plastic just to kill it off properly and what I've done is in this crease here um, I can't follow that with my finger down here I have, have planted tomato plants in there and also I've cut some holes in this plastic and I've planted some melons and cucumbers so I'm just going to let the ramble over the top of the um, weed membrane and then when it comes to autumn time or harvest time for the melons I will um, remove all of this plastic and probably put an overwinter cover crop in here um, ready for termination in spring and then hopefully by, the ta by that time we will have had um, two cover crops successive cover crops in here and lots of time with the pl black plastic on the soil surface we will have kind of weakened all of those weeds and weed seeds so um, then I will hopefully plant in spring with some maybe some hardy annuals and things just to see how we get on with that I haven't really got a lot of stuff going on in the greenhouse there are some biennials that I have tried to sow um, I am still having some issues with germination rates there's some dianthus in here that hasn't really germinated lots of these are weed seeds because I used a combination of um, classman seed compost and some of my cold compost so I've been doing some experiments with um, my Johnson Sioux compost and also my cold compost that has been uh, on the go for maybe about a year now so I've had a look at it under the microscope it looks great but germination rate hasn't been great in this bucket here I have in these two buckets I've got some hedging plants that I purchased in January or February um, with the thought set that I was going to be able to plant them straight out into my new fields and I didn't realise that it was going to be um, as late as last week than when we were going to be doing the fencing so I haven't planted them out because I just knew that rabbits, horses, whatever were going to just eat my plants and they were just going to die if I put them in the field so they've been living in these buckets quite nicely actually for the last few months so I'm looking forward to putting them in the ground however even though we have had some rain it is very um, hard on the ground still so I think it's going to be quite a task to get these in the ground 
So here we are in the front flower field. I did have a bit of a tidy up in here yesterday, so it's looking a lot better than it was. Um, here is the bunch of sedum, which is looking great. It's starting to produce its flower heads now, and um, that's going to continue to be a really useful filler. I would say that's probably my number one filler. Um, it lasts me from kind of May till September and I can just use it throughout all stages of its life and I just absolutely love using it. Um, the lupins, I chopped all of the seed heads off it yesterday so I'm not sure whether I'm going to get any secondary flowers off it now but I just wanted to chop those down so that um, it was looking a little bit tidier. There are some weeds mixed in with that but I uh, had enough of arriving with weeds yesterday I didn't get around to clearing those out. And then I've got um, this giant uh, scabious, which is taller than ever this year. It's looking really good. Um, that's going to be a really useful addition to the bouquet. It's a nice, vibrant yellow colour. And then down here, I've kind of tried to fill in all of the bare patches that I've got with um, surplus flowers because this field is going to be a bit of a hybrid of flowers and veg this season. So I'm kind of just put like rogue planting random stuff in places so there's some um limonium there which is the um i can't actually remember the full latin name but it's um marsh rosemary the purpley colored one and we've got some snapdragons and some sunflowers here and here we've got a small patch of uh, sweet corn there is actually a main planting of sweet corn over there but um I left that tray behind and forgot about it, so hopefully that will do okay on its own. And then we've got a squash plant there, another squash there, another squash there, and some echinaceas, uh, which is the pink colour. Planted those this spring. I'm looking forward to those. They're already looking quite healthy and like, it, like they're going to produce some good flowers. And then over here, we've got a batch of Vabascum Southern Charm. And these actually just self-seeded themselves um, amongst the, uh, the scabious here that we've got. Um, and I'm not too mad about that because they are great flowers to have. And then there's another batch of lupins here that I cut down yesterday. Um, I really like that colour lupin. I couldn't tell you right now what it's called. I think it's called Band of Nobles. Um, but I really like that colour, it's nice and vibrant. Then we've got the Alcamilla mollis up there, which has kind of collapsed after the rain. I hope you can hear me okay, because the wind's picked up a little bit. Um, that's also a great filler, I love using that one. And then here there's some more sunflowers and some dill here and another row of sunflowers next to it. And then the ox eye daisies, I absolutely love using those in arrangements. I think they're really nice kind of summery um, wildflower kind of element to the bouquets. And then, like I said, we've got a mixture of flowers and veg over here in this patch. So we've got the rhubarb that I planted um, maybe February time or March time. And then here is the clover that I planted in my last couple of videos I planted that and that is going to be a living pathway hopefully. I thought the slugs had had it all but it has grown back which is great. And then these two beds next to it are um, dahlias which were cover cropped over the winter um, and I cut down most of the cover crop um, but I left the facelia just because it's quite a handy thing to use at the moment. Then we've got some broad beans and there is actually some asparagus in the middle of this bed and um, only two or three of the crowns actually came up so I am um, growing lots of it from seed as well so that will add to the ones that I put in from crowns. And then at the top end of this bed here I planted yesterday some soybeans so hopefully they'll be good for the summer. That'll be an experiment, I haven't grown soybeans before. And then, um, and they're for eating by the way, not for any kind of flower stuff. Yesterday I cleared out this bed, it was very weedy, and planted some stuff into it. So I've got some amaranthus, some zinnias here, 
and um, these larger clumps are chasmanthium latifolium which is one of my favorite grasses to use in um, summer and autumn arrangements then here there's a couple more zinnia plants and some ceteria macrostachia grass then here is my main planting of sweet corn as usual the dog's walking over everything and then i've got a courgette plant here and a little one of the first courgettes of the season and then back there we have onions red and yellow onions um, planted with a couple of sunflowers in the middle and this is uh, lychnis coronaria white one and last year i, I nearly pulled this out because i didn't want to have it anymore but it has been before it flowered it was a really handy silvery colored foliage filler um and when it gets like this i find it hard to find it to, uh, to pick at the right stage so that's why i wanted to get rid of it but having used it in spring i think i might hold on to it now and there's a lonely tray of basil that needed to be planted out um here we have a little bit of a row of uh, monge too i picked some of that for my tea last night it was very nice and tasty i've got another tray of peas to go in to the beds um, in the greenhouse which desperately need planting out so i might get around to doing that today then here we've got some spinach some multicolored spinach uh, sorry not spinach some beetroot and also had some of that for tea last night it was very nice to eat homegrown produce and here i actually thought that this was um Part of the beetroot but this is definitely charred and it's definitely bolted <laughs> and here is another dahlia bed you can see that hardly any of them in this bed have come back up there are some that are trying to come but the slugs just keep kicking them back so you can see there this one is trying to grow but the slugs just won't let it but once they get past a certain point the slugs seem to leave it alone which is good uh, and bad <laughs> in the same sentence um, then here we've got some silene vulgaris i absolutely love this um it was one of those that i was going to get rid of as well um but i just need to cut this back hard and i think it will flower again this summer but i'm quite happy to use something like that in an arrangement because it is a little bit past it but these um seed pod style um flower heads are still quite decorative these artichokes have just started flowering so that's nice i might steal a couple of those for bouquets or i might eat them I haven't decided yet then um this here is quite a wide um kind of uh, pathway here and i have planted some very sparse um chamomile plants in here so those might um, fill out the bed. I think I probably need to come in and re-sow over the top of it just to try and make that covering of it a little bit thicker. Um, and then we've got another two beds of dahlias there. You can see how sparse they are. I have got a lot of plants in the greenhouse that need planting in the ground, but I am just very scared to plant them out because of the slug issue. Um, but I'm thinking maybe... Uh, set some slug traps or something at the same time and see what we can do to try and mitigate the the effect of the slugs then here is um a bed of which was spinach um and it bolted i did use quite a bit of it but i wish i'd have picked more because i didn't realize how quick it was going to bolt i wish i'd have picked more and frozen it but unfortunately um i did i wasn't aware how quick it was going to bolt but next time i can definitely um get that sorted a little bit quicker so yesterday i planted a line of kale here i'm not kind of i haven't got high hopes for it i think it's probably going to get eaten by something but we'll see and then um there's a charred plant here lettuce and then i've planted some spots of marigolds in between this salvia is looking really nice i'm going to pick that for the bouquets this week i will also be filming that um, bouquet making process and I know lots of you like watching those videos so I'll be filming that this week to try and get back on top of making the YouTube videos and then there we've got the Eryngium which is looking nice I actually have when I first started growing flowers I tried for a long time to get them to flower to sorry to get them to germinate from the seed but in the end 
I just bought some plants and that was the best way to do it I think. Then the rest of this bed is French beans and there's also another type of bean there, uh, climbing bean which is called Cherokee um, Trail of Tears I believe and then we've got some Astrantia, sorry Astrantia here which um, has flowered last week whilst I was on holiday and now it's just a little bit too late to pick because it's gone a bit brown but um yeah that survived the slugs it's been here for quite a while and it hasn't managed to break through the slug barrier yet but this year it seems to have done well so hopefully um in the future we can kind of uh, lift and divide those to try and create some more plants here on the farm. In this section back here I haven't managed to remove the weed membrane yet because some of the plants are obviously quite big there and it's probably worth waiting until next year instead because um, I am going to be moving all of my perennials into my new field around the back. So this is GM and of these GM plants I've got quite a few um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 actually only these two larger ones this one here and possibly this one have been um, pickable and they are the GM Mai Tai variety so what I think I'm going to do is get rid of these plants which is a different variety which I don't know the name of um, I'm going to be getting rid of those and just dividing these so that I can have more of that variety because it's very useful in spring bouquets and then we've got back here there's some penstemons there I actually thought I'd dug up all of the penstemons but obviously I left that one there for some reason then I've got some verbena hastata I've got the white pink and the blue variety there um, I'm not sure I'm on the fence about whether to keep that because um, I'm not really that keen on it and then here we've got some hypericums the hypericums are dotted around all over the place there's some there some in that corner so when I uh, lay out my new field at least I can put all of the same varieties together um, and then yeah there's the physocarpus at the back and then that's about it so although it is kind of chaotic in this field this year um, I'm kind of pleased with how it's looking at the moment um, it is going to be nicer next year when I can kind of put things into whole blocks rather than just a mishmash of stuff all over the place it definitely needs planning a little bit better even if it's going to be a veg patch um, just for our own use it still needs planning because otherwise it just doesn't um, work if you're just trying to wing it so um, I'm looking forward to harvesting lots of veg this year. I got that buzz last night when I was picking stuff for my tea. That buzz that you get from picking your own produce. Um, we had homegrown eggs on our tea. Um, some lettuce, monge to, um, beetroot and it was just so nice. So I'm looking forward to producing lots more homegrown food that's going to be lots more nutritious for us than the stuff you get in the supermarkets. Um, and it's going to be a lot better for us as a family so um, that is the main reason why I'm growing veg is because I don't believe that the stuff that you buy in supermarkets has much nutrition in it and what I would really like to do is make our family nice and healthy so that is the goal of the veg patch this year and that is basically it for the tour of the farm the catch up on what's been going on here if you've got any questions put them down in the comments box below and um, I will get back to you and I'm hoping to get back into the swing of making my videos as well because I do really enjoy making them and I know you guys enjoy watching them as well so um, onwards to the next video where I will be making um, subscription bouquets up for my customers thanks for watching guys see you next time